this is the Provoked Brawn, here to show you how to install, test and benchmark the Crucial T705 limited edition drive. This is a chunky NVMe SSD with a massive heat shield on it and it's PCIe Gen 5, meaning it can give you some blisteringly fast speeds, assuming you have the right motherboard. So I'm going to show you the setup process for it and talk through a number of key things that you need to know to make sure you're getting the right speed because you don't want to install it and find you're only getting half the read write speed as I am here. Instead, you want to make sure you're getting close to the advertised speeds when you've paid full price for the thing. So I'm going to show you the setup process on this ASRock Live Mixer motherboard, the initial installation and how that would work. And then I'm going to go into settings in the BIOS, in Windows and how to test it and other things. You'll see the drive itself basically just comes with the drive and nothing else which can lead to some problems depending on your system and how you've got things set up. I've got a brand new motherboard here with the parts necessary, so you'll see that in a second, but you might not have, so a word on that in a minute. But first of all, we're going to find the right port, which on this case is the top one. So we have to remove this heat shielding, which comes as standard, which you'd use with a drive without its own heat sink. And that's important if you've bought the drive without the heat shield, because you need to make sure your drive runs cool. Otherwise it will thermal throttle and you might not get the speeds that you want. What we're looking at here though, is the ports underneath it. And you'll notice that one is clearly marked as PCIe Gen 5. This is important because it's a Gen 5 drive, so if you want it to run at maximum speeds, you need to make sure you install it in the right place. There are other ports on this motherboard, but they're Gen 4, which means this drive would only get half the read-write speeds if you install it. Then you need an M2 screw. Now this one was included with the motherboard, and you'd use that to secure it to the standoff on the motherboard itself. If you've got a pre-built system, you might not have this screw, so I'll leave links in the description so you can purchase your own. Alternatively, your motherboard might have a plastic clip instead of a screw system, like this Gigabyte motherboard, where you can install the drive and then the clip holds it down in place instead of the screw, which is a lot simpler. A Zeus and Gigabyte have these, and they may be available on other motherboards too. They make the installation process easier. Note again, if you're not using the heat shield version of this drive, it's important to use the heat shield that came with the motherboard. Take the plastic sticker off so that the thermal pad can have good contact and help dissipate that heat. And that's because these drives can run particularly hot when they're under heavy load and they're transferring a lot of files and they have a top operating speed which if they reach it, they will then slow right down. I've done a separate video on that that I'll link to in the description and why it matters. Then you go about installing your system and setting it up if you haven't already. So you can see I put the motherboard into this Montec case that I've built. And then I'm actually using this drive as the single drive in the system. And in the BIOS, it was immediately recognized and it's worth checking to see if that's the case. Now I'm actually installing Windows on this drive. It's the only drive in there apart from the standard SSD drives that are also in their 2.5 inch drives. But if you're installing this as an additional drive, you might find that it's not immediately recognized by Windows. So I'm going to quickly show you how to sort that out. So if we go into Windows, you can then find the way to do this. So if you've opened up Windows Explorer and you can see there's only one drive in your system when there should be two, what you want to do is hit the Windows Start button and then search for Create and format hard drive partitions and open up the disk management tool. Under disk management, you should see the drive pop up as an option. I've actually got two drives in this recording, but the single drive should pop up to initialize here under this setting. If it doesn't, it might be a BIOS thing that's holding it back and we'll get to that in a little while. But you'll see that the drive is then labeled with a black marker on it and then unallocated space. So if we look at disk zero, right click and then click to do new simple volume Go through there, assign it a drive letter, and give it a volume name. So just name it logically. This clip is from the T700 drive I did a while ago. And then you just format it. Wait for it to format in the disk management tool, and you should find that it then appears in Windows Explorer so that you can then use it as standard. It's at this point that I'd recommend doing some testing on it, though, to make sure it's running properly. So there are a few different tools that I'll link to in the description. I'd recommend getting Hardware Info 64 and Crystal Disk Mark. Hardware Info 64 will show you the drive is recognized and what other drives you have in your system. 
you can look at that at a glance and see what's there but you can also dive into more detail on the drive to make sure it is working as proper so if you look under the devices section here for example you'll see drives mvme drives find the relevant drive you can see it's mvme pcie x4 and it's running x4 speeds which means this isn't actually correct because it should be gen 5 and then running at x4 speeds as you can see it's recognized as gen 5 but it's not actually running at gen 5 and that is why it's important to check these things beforehand you don't want to assume that it's running at the right speed so with crystal disk mark running i actually have task manager on the left and hardware monitor on the right which is another tool where we can see get an idea of the speeds of this so crystal disk mark is a tool that you can just use to quickly test your drive and make sure that it's running as expected it puts it under the synthetic load and runs through tests there but what i saw immediately is it's basically running at half the speed that it should do so it's running at gen 4 speeds which is around 7,000 megabytes per second instead of the advertised 14,000, which is obviously not ideal you can see that on the right hand side in hardware monitor here and get an idea of that and this is also useful to use hardware monitor or hardware info to get an idea of the temps as well because you can see that the current temperatures for this drive are about 66 degrees it has a max operating temperature of somewhere in the 80s so if it gets really hot 80 90 degrees because you've got poor airflow in your case then that could be causing it to throttle so if you do see the speeds are actually low then that could be one of the reasons why so this is obviously an issue because at the end of the test it's showing that it's not right the speeds are wrong so we need to make some changes so we go back into the bios and you'll see in here we go into the advanced mode settings now this is going to be different from bios to bios obviously but you may have to go into the advanced settings and then into your chipset configuration options and storage configuration you'll notice there's also nvme configuration but here we're in chipset configuration and you'll notice that PCIe 1 link speed is set to auto. The reason I mentioned that you'll see in a second, but the actual speed of your Gen 5 drive can impact the graphics card as well. So what I've done here is I've gone to for PCIe Express native control and enabled it. So turning this on gives more power in the OS. It's a power saving measure. But basically we're turning that on and then restarting there may be other settings that you might have to change in order for your drive to be recognized but what i found is this one actually helps because it means that the drive's running at the proper speed so you can see now when i go through the same test we're running at 13,000 megabytes per second not quite as fast as advertised but that's obviously going to vary from system to system anyway depending on a number of other factors but it's definitely faster than the 7,000 it was a minute ago I'm also recording at the same time as well, which is worth bearing in mind because we're running on one drive recording and testing. So if you're doing more than one thing on your drive, that in itself could cause issues. Now, the other thing I mentioned is if you're using a Gen 5 drive on some motherboards that can cause your graphics card to actually reduce the number of lanes on it. So you can see if we look here, the GPU is actually running at eight lanes instead of 16, which might scare you because you might think this is going to cause a problem but actually it doesn't and I'm happy to report that there isn't an issue there because I've done the testing and I've shown it separately that this doesn't cause any problems in performance because the x16 slot is PCIe gen 5 which is being dropped down to gen 4 but at 8 lanes instead of 16 so it doesn't actually negatively impact gaming performance or FPS so there's no need to worry about that now if you find that your tests are showing the speeds still aren't right the other thing to do is go to your windows security settings go to device security and core isolation you can turn off memory integrity here and that will help with speed and microsoft says it actually helps with game loads as well and other things that can be beneficial for gamers though as you'll know it does suggest that it could cause problems because it's designed to help protect your system so turn it off at your own risk then there's another setting that you can do where you can go into uh, Windows features. So search for Windows features and then scroll down and you'll be looking for virtual machine platform. Make sure that's unticked as well. So those two settings need to be turned off in order to maximize the speed of your drive and make the most of it. So hopefully I've given you some insights into what to do with your drive. Be sure to check out the links in the description to other related videos that I've done on NVMEs and how to make the most of them and things that you need to know. If you've enjoyed this, please subscribe and let me know in the comments down below what you think. Thanks for watching.